So the first thing that I want to say is I want to apologize for this video being so late. But I've just been completely unable to make videos with work and holidays and all the stuff that's been going on. So I apologize for it being late. You may already know the information. But I guarantee you, even if you know some of the information, this is going to be faster. So I want to make this video very quick and kind of get to the point really quickly. So I apologize for that little bit, but also a little bit more as well. My comprehensive guide that I'll be coming out with later uh, will include kind of how to do all this stuff. But I'm really just going to be covering what to do. So let's first off talk about, uh, or kind of get you in perspective here. Um, not all quest hubs are created equal. So let's go ahead and just kind of try to generalize as much as possible uh, which zones are better to level in. So we're going to go ahead and list the zones from best to worst. And right, I just got to say right now, I'm sorry, Horde. It just, it's just the way that it is. So the best zones from to worst is going to be Spires of Erak, uh, Gorgrond, Shadowmoon Valley, Nagrind, uh, Talador, and then Frostfire. Unfortunately, your beginning zone, Frostfire Ridge, is probably the worst zone that you can pick to level in. So, again, sorry, Horde. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is Rested, and I should have talked about this first, I apologize. But basically, if you plan to level a character and you haven't logged onto it since Warlords released, go on, stop everything you're doing and go log onto that character right now, because Rested, it may not seem important because Monster XP is low, but Rested is going to be really important to this way of leveling. So go ahead, log on that tune, and basically the reason is, well, I don't want to get into the reasons here, but go ahead and log on that tune because I said so. <laughs> So now that we've talked about rested and what zones we should prioritize, we need to talk about what items we're going to use. So the very first thing that you need to know is to try to get as many garrison resources as possible. You're going to be getting some of these while leveling, but mostly you want to try to get your garrison up and loot that box every couple of days. Now, 10 hours played does not mean 10 hours solid. Uh, we're going to need some time to get some garrison resources and need some time to get some additional rested when we hit certain zones. So just make sure you try to get to your garrison as fast as possible and then come back to it a little bit later. Alright, so we're going to need garrison resources because there's a potion that you can get, and again, I don't have any editing software currently, so I can't go back and show you all this stuff, and I apologize, but I just don't have the capacity to do that right now. So you're going to need to go get the uh, the garrison potion that gives you 100% uh, or 20% uh, twenty extra experience, um, costs about 100 garrison resources. Um, now you're going to be using that obviously all the time, 20%, we're trying to do leveling as fast as possible, so that's going to be great. Another thing that you should try to get is the guild experience banners. And again, I can't show you the item, um, but you go to your guild vendor, and if you're repped with your guild, and if they've unlocked the achievements, you can get 5, 10, or 15% experience banners. There's three of them. You can use them all or whatever, uh, but they're going to be really important for specific things we're going to be talking about later, uh, which is going to be those Draenor treasures. So let's go ahead, and before we talk about that, let's talk about add-ons really quick. <clears throat> So the add-ons that you're going to need uh, are Dougie Questing Guide, D-U-G-I Dougie Questing Guide. Also, you're going to be needing um, the uh, add-on to find your Draenor treasures a little bit easier. And that is going to be the one that I use is Handy Notes uh, underscore Draenor Treasures. Uh, I haven't looked at, at it on Curse in a little while, so I can't tell you exactly what it is. Um, but that is, those are the two add-ons that are going to be imperative to doing this entire thing. All right, so now that we've kind of covered most of the moving parts, let's kind of talk about how you push all these things together and to make a really quick leveling experience. Again, um, I'll explain all this stuff in a later video, but this is kind of just take my word for it. As soon as I can get my computer together, then we'll kind of make this work. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our rested experience. That's going to stack with our potions, and that's also going to stack with our experience banners. And we're going to be trying to find as many Draenor treasures as we can. Um, now, it's important to know that these Draenor treasures are worth um, a little bit more than a quest. So if you spend like two to five minutes finding one, it's really not that big a deal. But you really don't want to spend too much time doing it, more than you would a quest. Uh, now, the other thing that we're going to be looking for is how long to stay in each zone. Because this is actually really important. And I bet a lot of you guys are just like, oh, well, the fastest way to level is get to 92, go to the next zone, get to 94, go to the next zone. And it's not a bad way to level. However, this is a little bit better because of how quest hubs work. <clears throat> so basically, um, as Alliance, you're going to try to stay into Shadow Moon um, for most of the quest hubs. Definitely get every single bonus objective in every in every hub or every zone. Lol, <laughs> and um, try to get as many Draenor treasures as you can. Now, this is going to be pretty easy for Shadow Moon Valley as a as Alliance. You're going to probably stay in Shadow Moon Valley till like 93 and a half or something like that. For Horde, you're going to try to leave as Frostfire Ridge as fast as possible. Do the quest line a little bit. Uh, get your bonus objective done, bonus objectives done, and then find some Draenor treasures, get to 92, and go to Gorgrond right away. Why? Because Gorgrond is the second best zone out there. It's a really, really great zone. You want to spend as much time in Gorgrond as you can. 
So now that you're into Gorgrund, either Horde at 92 or Alliance at 93 and a half or something like that, you're just going to do all the bonus objectives. The quest line isn't really all that important. So you're going to be doing these bonus objectives. They're going to change based on whether you picked the Lumber Mill or the Arena or whatever. Uh, and just get all the bonus, bonus objective done. That's probably going to get you to 95 just by itself. Try to find some Draenor treasures. Now here's the really tricky part that's kind of open to interpretation. You don't want to do Talador. Talador is a really bad zone. But the bonus objectives are always good. So you can go into Talador and do the bonus objectives, or you can try to skip Talador altogether. Basically, you want to get as much experience in uh, Gorgon as, as possible and try to go straight to Spires of Iraq. So the reason why this is because Spires of Iraq is the greatest zone ever. And Talador is not that great, and Gorgon's pretty good. So you can kind of just soak up all the experience in Gorgon and just go straight over to Spires of Iraq. <clears throat> So the way we're going to do this um, in Gorgrind, just do the quest lines that are that take you near the Draenor treasures, which I will again explain in a later video. Try to do all the bonus objectives and get as close to 96 as possible. Um, so once you've done that, then Spires of Iraq is really where things start to take off. And this is where leveling becomes crazy, because as you level, the levels become harder, right? And 99 to 100 are notably harder than all the other levels in how long it takes to get through them. So, what I've found, and all the other levels go pretty quick, you can see at least, um, or l less than an hour if you're doing this transition pretty well, especially with Dougie Guides. So basically what I've found is that, you know, cl certain classes are better at leveling than others. Like, uh, DKs and Boomies are really strong, but, oh my god. Fuck it, we'll do it live. I don't care if people fuck up my recording. <laughs> Even though it's got curse words in it. Alrighty, <laughs> so where was I? Uh, certain classes are better than others. Obviously, Boomies are probably the best leveling class ever, and if you're looking to have fun while leveling, I recommend Boomkin extremely highly. It's probably the most fun I've ever had while questing. Anyway, getting back on point. So certain classes would be better than others, but I found that my DK on Boomkin could clear Spires of Iraq from 96 to 99 and a half in about 2 to 3 hours maximum. So we're talking three of the hardest levels in the game uh, done in almost 2 hours. So uh, it's actually really insane. So uh, the reason why Spires of Iraq is so good is you get to your outpost as soon as possible. And that's the thing where you upgrade your garrison, you have like a little outpost of your garrison. They're called outposts, funny enough. Um, you're going to get to your outpost and try to get that 20% experience buff, which is, I think, from the tavern or the brew something for Alliance. I don't remember the names. Again, I apologize for the crappy quality of this video. This is actually really long already. <laughs> that kind of sucks. So you're going to get to Spires of Iraq as soon as possible. Get to that experience buff as soon as possible. And the thing that's great about this experience buff is it stacks with everything else. So you're just going to try to get all the quests done, all the bonus objectives done, and pretty much most of the, the Draenor treasures done. And the reason why is with all these things stacking up with your experience potion, with the 20% buff from Spires, and with the rested, and with your banners, you're going to get about two to three quests worth of experience out of picking up one of these items. Now, you're not always going to have your banner on cooldown to pick up these items, but that's like 35, 40,000 experience from one item. So it's extremely lucrative here. And pretty much that's the whole secret to leveling from 90 to 100 in 10 hours played, guys. And uh, I hope you check it out, and I hope you come back and check the comprehensive video because there's going to be um, some, you know, more info about how to do this a little bit more effectively. Because you might follow this guy and get like 12 hours done, but most people seem to be leveling in about 20 hours. And I just felt like this is such a huge thing that people need to learn because you can level 50% faster. Um, so, again, <laughs> check it out, guys, and uh, I hope you level quick. And, you know, if you hate leveling like me, this is pretty great. All right. See you later.